myself make myself more efficient in my efforts and uh, ultimately get myself to my greatest output. Um, That's a great point. But yeah, it's 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 like that across the board. That's so true. just speaking to what you to the things that y'all were just talking about with the three percent, three percent of the people who were present here in the land we call America. Right. During the time of Revolutionary War, actually participated in the defense of what they were trying to build here. Yeah, just like in in um like you were saying, I mean this is something that's just true across the board. Right. Eighty twenty. So the small collective of black people, right? Black African, like you know, spiritually aware, knowledge of self, all uh-huh. that good stuff, whatever right. you want to call it. Right. We're we're trying to make this. Infect the Bigger, masses, yeah. but it's like we the are the co- mass. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that's where it's at. It's like we we sh- a lot of us, you know, even myself, you know, we say, look, we're trying to liberate, we're trying to liberate our people. We want everybody to to be free, but it's like it's never going to be that way. Never. It's never going to be that way. It never has been that way. Right. Right. The society <laughs> wasn't built that way. You can't right. because most people want to be led. Most people are not results driven. Mm-hmm. And the and the people who are there's a small collective every time, just mm-hmm. like the government. How many how many senators, uh, you know, state representatives, and all that stuff like that? We can we can count them. Yeah, we yeah. can count them. Because five hundred twelve. Right. Exactly, five hundred twelve people are at the helm of a nation that houses how many mil- right. over over what is it over two hundred thousand two hundred uh, million, million people three hundred million people almost here. Yeah. So you got five hundred. That's probably somewhere, that's probably less than 20%. Right. That's less than 20% of the population yeah, well, that's uh, responsible for less than the three legislation. Three. Right, yeah, yeah. less than three. So that's what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> it's always going to be that yeah. way. Yeah. It's yeah. always so, going to be that way. So back to like what you were saying with the 80-20 rule. Yeah. So before I came into consciousness, I was uh, doing corporate level sales. I was running sales offices and these types of things. And one thing that we would, we would always learn about our office and recruiting and all that type mm-hmm. of stuff is that no matter what, no matter what office you was going to, no matter what company, no matter what client, the top or 80% of the sales is going to be done by the top 20% of the salespeople. Well, you know, there's a book out called Monday Morning Meetings that spoke to that. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a real good book in terms of like, <clears throat> especially if you're trying to have like a corporate yeah. sort of situation, money more than meetings, mm-hmm. when it spoke to the fact that the 20% is the 20, 40, 20 rule, uh-huh. was it 20, 60, 20 rule. Mm-hmm. 20% was going to hold, you know, was going to be the ones carrying the brunt of the work. Uh-huh. Yeah. 20% was going to be dragging. Uh-huh. And the 60% follow whatever 20% was mm-hmm. doing right. strong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. So if you're 20% that was dragging, was the most influential, yeah. and that's where the sixty was going. Right. But if you're twenty percent, that was actually, <clears throat> excuse me, actually leading. Right. Then that's where the sixty was going. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and then mm-hmm. and how that translates, I believe, to, to like us is like because uh, when you get into a lot of uh, black power type of talks or groups or meetings and things like that, everyone it seems like a lot of the message is trying to wake people up. You see, waking people up, trying to wake people up. We spending. 80% of our time trying to wake people up and only 20% of the time building with the people who already got the information to create about the genuine material improvement yes. we see. And so with the 80-20 rule, we learn that if we spend 80% of our time with the people who already got the information, then the product, so we basically we spend our 80% of the time with that top 20%. Mm-hmm. You see, and then uh, and that and that's on individual levels and these types of things, and then we spend twenty percent uh, of our time with eighty percent of the people, mm-hmm. just in a group mm-hmm. collective. It's like yeah, we spend twenty percent of the time dealing with the masses to disperse certain ideas. Eighty percent of the time building with the the actual people who we know is going to be. When we look to the left and right, they they in the ground with us. Yeah, that's yo, that's that's it. That's yeah. it. Well, well, just like know. yeah. I mean, I was just going just like as far as the reason. Like how you related to right. your to your business experience, the right. same thing, eighty twenty, you know, with with my products and everything that we produce, and in most businesses, like they have a, a concrete product that they offer, I could have I can make a thousand shirts, but it's like people still come to me looking for hella black hella proud. Right. And that came out almost two years ago. Right. right. So it's like I've got new stuff. <laughs> right, but right. people still want that. It's That's like it. your strongest, so you have to focus 
on bolstering your strongest components. Mm. You know, it's like you really have to put as many legs under them as possible. So now what do I do in, uh, as far as business practice? Now, all right, y'all like the Hill Black Hill Proud t-shirt? I'm going to give y'all a tank top for the summertime. Oh, the ladies like to get, get fly, but they still want to rep. I'm going to give y'all a, t- a tank top dress. You know what I mean? I'm going to give y'all a maxi skirt. I'm going to give y'all wristbands. I'm going to give y'all a hat. I'm going to give you a jacket. It's, I'm a hoodie. Everything. Maximum. That's the maximization yeah. of the, the idea. It's the same way they took a stronghold on the Hello Black, Hello Proud concept. It's the same way we got to take a stronghold on uh, that redefining the concept of black nationalism, mm-hmm. what black power is, manhood, womanhood, strategy, collective effort, group economics. These types of things were, I didn't learn about until I was 20-something. But I went to Morehouse College, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Morehouse College, supposed to be a prestigious school for black men. I ain't never hear Marcus Garvey name. I ain't never hear, you know, nothing about Marcus Mack. I ain't never hear nothing about, you know. But when you think name. about it, though, think about who were the founders of most HBCUs. Right. Mm-hmm. Those people who were the founders of most HBCUs, they were, in, in fact, you know, some of the people who were trying to control the black problem. Right. Mm-hmm. Post-Reconstruction. Okay. All right, so... All right. Rockefeller took his train ride, mm-hmm. you know, across the country. Yeah, yeah. They realized that black people are building all over the country. See, this is not, they, don't, they ain't going to talk about that. Right. Black people are building all these independent communities. Black people are building. So they had one aspect where they're going to terrorize those communities. Then they had the other aspect where we're going to control their learning process, mm-hmm. control their learning curve. So we're going to, you know, what do they call it? Um, and I always tell people to run when they hear the term, um, what is it, philanthropy. Mm-hmm. If you hear somebody say they're philanthropists, yeah, like Andrew mm-hmm. Carnegie, you know? all that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because because they, they made the role. Exactly. They mean you no good, and they mean to control the outcome. Mm-hmm. And what happened was they created all of these HBCUs, and they funded the HBCUs. Mm-hmm. And what they done was, as benevolent white, rich white men and mm-hmm. landowners, they controlled the learning process so that blacks would become... And um, not yeah, independent supervise to work under supervision exactly yeah. to continue to build the institutional right. white supremacy. Yes, exactly. That's and that's proven because we went to HBCU. Mm-hmm. I went to HBCU, and that's the number one thing that we that we must know from colleges, mm-hmm. like for the young queens and young young uh, emperors out there, is that like if you're going to 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 higher uh, level of inst- uh, education for whatever reason. Make sure that you're moving on a perspective that, like, how Asians mm-hmm. move. They tell their children, yo, work hard, go to school, so you can learn how to create a job. Mm-hmm. You see? Because all they're going to do at these schools is empower you to go out and to work for them. Yeah. 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 That, I've read somewhere that the root of education, or, like, the, the that word, whatever the, the Latin root is. Educo. Okay. Right. So, yeah, the Latin root for education, you know, basically gives power or gives way to basically it, it, it works out as they're training you to keep things going and maintain the status quo conserve, conserve to, to build yeah to right to build to continue the building of their empire the mm-hmm. education in our education system they teach you meaningless information mm-hmm. as a child and everything when you get old enough they give you some concrete skills that you can apply in these different areas that keep the infrastructure of this country going yeah. or the or the corporation yeah. the corporate structure you you will all right now you you going to be uh bolstering this part of the infrastructure you're going to work uh in parks and rec or something like that you're going right. to work you know what i'm saying it's all, right. all these different things that keep it flowing forward so even us how many people in the uh black power community you know work in a within a corporate structure that's like enslaving right en- enslaving them right. Me- basically yeah, well, yeah, how many out. how many of us in, reinforce the things that we say we're against? Yeah. Oh, and and oh, that and that's the, 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 right, yeah, right, that, that's, right. the hypo- that's the hypocrisy. So that's <laughs> why this is why in seventeen and beyond, like the conversation gotta be accountability, yeah. like personal accountability. Yeah. That's why, like, it's no deflection, mm. like because this is where we are gonna figure out who's serious about this or not. Because if we serious, if you serious, I don't matter. It don't matter who you are, what you did. What your past was and these type of things. If you committed to becoming the, your greatest version, if you be committed to realizing where you at, and then I, right, I'm gonna go one. I can only go up one level at a time, and I'm yeah. committed to continuing to evolve myself. Mm-hmm. I could deal with that type of person. Yeah. You, uh, the reason I'm at where I'm at is because of my past thoughts and actions. If I would have thought different things in the past, and I would have believed had a different belief system, I would have done different things. 
and I would have different habits, which I had different character, which I would be in a different situation today. Mm-hmm. You know, it falls under the psychology, and I'm and I teach out of this book. Um, I teach a class called Creative Leadership, mm-hmm. and out of this book mm-hmm. is called um, the the Path of Least Resistance. Mm-hmm. And basically, it talks about how society is set up to create these channels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm gonna yeah. put all these obstacles the in your place so that you go down this particular path, mm-hmm. you function this particular way, yeah. and this is the path of least resistance. Man. And I'm gonna make you lazy intellectually so that you only focus this and to sport get, and play. There you mm-hmm. go. That's how to sport and play. There you go. Man, you just hit it. You hit it. Yo. That's crazy. Because that's why because I, I realized that though. Because that's one of the biggest things that made me transition why I go so hard the way I do is because my I was in a two parent household. It wasn't my biological pops, but I, I had a pops to give me life and a pops to give me love. But it's like, and he in the Navy, so I was just fortunate enough to see uh, my eyes on a lot of different regions, more stuff that a lot of people have. But then I come back to the States, and what I end up doing, I rap really good, you feel me? I hoop really good, you feel me? I hoop, play sports in, in college, you know, uh, went on a uh, you know, sexual conquest. Robbed a lot of people, did a whole bunch of stuff, went to jail a whole bunch of times, and these types of things. And it's like my parents didn't raise me to do that, mm, right? Mm. And if I and it's like and then and then one, a couple of my comrades who live in this house right here was bigger than mine, and they got four car garages, and he, you know, further further off than I am. And I realized, like you said, that that social engineering, that conditioning, mm. it's in the mu- it's the music that we listening to. It's the music. And the uh, uh, Euro- European ownership of black or African, where we've seen African music, mm-hmm. we don't realize that they said that the whole purpose of rock and roll was to uh, cast spells on the youth. Mm-hmm. And so they just term hip hop is basically just a it's sped a giant up, time, right? yeah, just a sped up rock and roll. So they just casting spells. So then mm-hmm. that's how you could be walking down the street or, or standing outside and it's a red light. And I remember this vividly. Uh, this is one of the reasons that helped me, uh, made me leave corporate and try and add value in another place. Because I'm sitting here, this woman jamming in a car to the music, loud music, and then it's three little kids in the back talking about, you want to see some ass, I want to see some cash. Mm. Keep them dollars coming, that's going to make me dance, mm. right? Remember that Make Yo, It Rain song? Man. That Make It Rain song, right? <laughs> and so with the music behind it, that's a, that's mass hypnosis. So yeah. the queen here to jump, you could be in mid-conversation with a queen mm. uh, at a bar, and then a song come on, and she don't she lost her mind. Yeah. She lost her mind. She can't even finish her statement. She was just saying, because she all, you know, yeah. whatever. But then if you, come, if you come to her with that music off and, and say to her a lyric of that song, she'll slap you in the face. Right, repeating the <laughs> yeah. lyrics of her favorite that, song. Yeah, yeah. For that same type of song, I'm like, yo, I got some cash, I want to see some ass. She'll slap you. <laughs> right? It's because that music don't put her in that same hypnotic state. And she's right. able to really adjust and accept. I'm on tell me what she hears. So. Yo, we can keep rapping, but I'm, yeah. I'm, oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. Yo, so I got a lot. Good. I got Speaking lot about, um, like, the hypnosis of it. So oh, you yeah, oh, are yeah, right, yeah, yeah. live, yeah. Oh, yo, live. Yeah, I just started going live. Yo, but it's like the hypnosis effect. You know, um, I was listening to a brother. I don't know if y'all might know him, Jeff Weaver. Uh, he's he's a, he's an author, but he does a lot of work in music and everything, specifically African drums and things like that. Uh, brother here from Philly, but um, he has a book called The Five Fifth. Oh, there's no compromising. You know what I mean? But he he touched on the use of African drums in music, the use of drums, period, and how you are literally hypnotized. You know what I'm saying? I never thought about it, mm-hmm. but it's like he said, the same way when someone holds a watch or a pendulum in front of you and tells you to follow it with your eyes. You yeah, follow it with your me. eyes. So now, the beat, yeah. when they put the beat on, mm-hmm. your head, instead of your eyes going like this, your head is going up and mm-hmm. down. So yeah. it's the same thing. It's like that once mm-hmm. you, once they got you bobbing, you're in. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. like, so when you're, when you're not, you're not in. But when you, it's like, ooh. Oh yeah, it's that's instant. Sometimes, no, sometimes yeah, you just program to so, like you just go right that's in. That's so real because I was looking at the studies of uh, the the original cathedrals in the Roman uh, Catholic church, yeah. and even some of the mm-hmm. ones that's here. Okay, like the you, you, these big, huge churches, right? They're built in the walls, like the the pipes is built within the walls and the, the organs. So then, when you press it, you press the you press the key, 
It makes the same noise like from the front and the back of the church, all in every angle. The pipes is set up yeah. where it creates this whole entire effect. And this is why, oh this is God. why when it gets to any church you come in, when it gets to the come to come to Jesus moment, mm. right, right before the pastor is finishing up, that's mm. when that organ come right back in. Mm -hmm. You see, and the choir was singing prior to get you in this hypnotic state. Now the organ is gonna come in. The pastor is gonna get to expressing his pain and how he can just throw all his pain onto. The Lord, yes. right, and that's where he gets all his shit. So then, the, the, con the congregation is all with it. They like, yo, I feel my pain too. The pastor, he is the most righteous person that I know, mm -hmm. and he, you know, still admit his pain. All oh, yes, thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you. the organ, the junk, and then boom. Got you. Come to Jesus. Right, come to Jesus. You feel me? Right, and then and then just think about this. Come to Jesus. Come yo. to Jesus. Just now, <laughs> he will save you. We got the song and everything. He will save right? right. I was just saying, I was born and raised in that. You see? Yeah. And if you like, the hypnosis. And that's the mass, mass hypnosis. It's crazy. Oh. So then we can even think about how the hypnosis, a lot of these online, um, these these murders, these uh, uh, these modern day lynchings that we see online, yeah. live videos and things like this. This is mass hypnosis. These are the same type of things where they would tie our woman up to the joint, mm. she pregnant, mm. slit her stomach open, right. baby come out, they stomp on the head in front of everyone. Right. You see, because and it instilled that spirit. That type of thing would, can only happen on one little plantation. This little person, this yeah. little small group, see it now. They, it can be played millions and 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 millions of times. All ages, all all races. You feel me? Everybody, this is this is what happens to black people. Yeah. Like period, just for being black. So let alone try and do something constructive. Oh, oh, that's that. That's that mass hypnosis, bro. It's crazy. And in addition to that, being a mass hypnosis piece, you know what you also have going on is. You know, it makes you sort of desensitized to it because you see it every day. Right, yeah. right. You start seeing it all the time. You become desensitized to see something. So the first time you see it, I never forget there was a, a child about six years old. It was like 1982, 83. Uh -huh. um, um, I think his name was Marcus Yates, if I'm not mistaken. I might have the name wrong, but I think he, and he was outside of a, a store in South Philly. And it was the store got robbed. And oh, it wasn't a robbery, it was a shootout. And he got killed. And that was front page story. And that story touched the hearts of the whole city for about five days. Hmm. Then about two, three years later, people getting shot, innocent bystanders getting shot was just like as common as, as uh, you know, hmm. weather forecast. Right. Hmm. And it was like it played over and over to the point where it got desensitized to the point where you didn't even really care about it anymore because you got used to it. Hmm. And that's what's happening, you know, when you start mm -hmm. seeing like the, um, the murders on hmm. camera with... When it started with Eric Gardner yeah. mm -hmm. dying on camera, and um, crazy. and then you started to see, and I was in New York like a week later. Yeah, mass right after hypnosis, that, bro. You know? and, crazy. You know the pot and the people up there were upset, but they weren't ready to. Yeah, you right. Ain't nobody ready yeah. to do that. But nothing. yeah, the crazy. reason, but the reason that no one able to do because yeah, is because they said they such, they do such a good well, job with the propaganda. Before you even do something, yeah. so people they had you telling telling your own destruction and demise before you even start. So it's like, because the main thing that people this one thing I realized people would be telling me and Ron to be careful all the time uh, because of the life that the life that we choose and because our interests are you know black specific. But people always want to compare. Oh yeah, they killed Malcolm and Martin. You feel me? And it's like golly, fam, I can't <laughs> like dog. That shit was fifty. 60 ago, like, that can't be the reason why we're not moving, no, right? That can't be the reason why why we're not being bold enough is because... Did yeah, you saw what they did to Fred, right? Like, <laughs> I read I read about it, yeah. I mean... But, but other than Darren Sill and other than um, Sandra Bland, yeah. everybody else they killed, they weren't active. In right, that. exactly. They were just regular Joes trying to stay out of the way. Right. And so who do you think they're targeting? Right. They're going to target y'all quiet Negroes who are afraid to conf to, to deal with anything. Exactly. They're afraid to confront the situation. Yeah. The ones that want to be hide in the back and just blend in there right. and pretend like this ain't happening until it happens to you. Right. Right. You know, right. Damn. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Cause, you know, scared right. ones get yeah, it too. Yeah, because they, yeah. they get it first. They yeah. get it first. Yeah, scared ones get, get it first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. They don't, yeah, because that's what you would do. Yeah. Because it's just like, mm. they're going to react.
because because at the end of the day, they already yeah. they already yeah. Syst- they've already yeah. think about this. Yeah. They've already systematically suppressed the the black warrior spirit. Period. Right. Period. Like just from like. Uh, I'm just going. Black on black crime. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we not. The, you, okay. Okay. Yeah. The outlet. The for, outlet. Yeah. For that aggression, we took because we have no. We're afraid to attack our our true yeah. enemy outside. Yeah. Our self hate. Because yeah. we kill each other. Because we the same reason that the officer kills. Because we don't see no value in each other. Because we looking at at um, our brother from the same lens that the officer is. And not only that, we see it that like I was in a situation. It was a chicken spot, and. um these three, two brothers was in there already, mm-hmm. and then this other brother came in. Mm-hmm. Now, the two brothers that was in there earlier, they, they were younger, they sized me up, you know, mm-hmm. I was late night. Yeah. So I just, you know, gave him a little glance like it's not happening, so yeah. keep it pushing. So the other brother came in. Then right behind him, two police officers came in, mm-hmm. and they made the other young brothers that were sizing me up post up on the wall, and they patted them down and said the other. So the one brother was like, yo, I don't, you know, what are you doing? Get off me. They were grabbing him, trying to hustle him. And he was, you know, basically they was like, well, we grabbed you because you were with these guys. And we heard there was three of y'all in here selling drugs, this, that, and the other. He's like, cuz, I just walked in here. I don't know these guys. Get off me. The young brothers that were sizing me up, like I was steak on the menu, told the old brother, yo, chill, bro. Let them do their job. Right. Oh, oh my God! The brother was. Who's <laughs> <laughs> at this point? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I like yeah. Because because. But, that, but then but that's but that's the code Damn. though. That's the code, Damn. nigga. Damn. It's just like it's, it's just like, it's just like this. My heart. It's just like this. You don't oh, have to. You don't shit. have to. You don't have to tell black people how to act Damn. when they go into a church house because Jesus, white Jesus is watching. Right. Get it. Right. Don't be so white, white person, yeah. Right. Mean? Just like similarly, likewise, you can see because the st- social experiments is real. Yes. Yeah. Black people gonna act crazy when that one per hour take is one European around yeah, the uh, group, the whole, t- the whole posture of of the when people. You start becoming articulate. Yeah. You got no. that. You got you got you got words now. All your slang oh, gone. Cold switch. switch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Oh. That's what really hurts me. Man. And I'm a great code switcher too. Yeah. You know what I, I think, mean? I think but it's like they train they train us. <laughs> like they train us so well to do it. But then now, it's like now the fact that since we since we're professional and I choose not to code switch now because I, if I want to say black still like that and I'm talking to Europeans, yeah. if I want to be like black, 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 you know what I mean? Now all of a sudden I can't do that because oh, I'm still supposed to appease to them. White people are so used to everybody who come to talk to them. Is going out of their way to make Woo! sure that to make sure that that white person's not or is comfortable, like you said. Yeah, comfortable, feeling safe, and nah, right, right, I'm right. It's yeah. not about stirring. Yeah, you cannot stir that fear up. Yeah. That's why they made. But you, when you think about how they had us sounding, and um, you know, when we gotta when we relate with them. Uh, in them older films and everything. Oh, yes, and boss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all the guys talking in this high-ass pitch because we got that a tone, tone yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's different from a white man's tone. You could, yeah, it, it, even when you're not trying to have a bass. That's why right. we's outside talking. You, know, you hear his voice reverberating through the hallway. It's right. like yeah. we whispering. Yeah. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. We just got the tone. Yeah, that's crazy. I, y'all literally whispering. We whispering. I'm looking at the, the meter on the mic. I'm saying, hold on. I said, oh, yeah, you got to close that door. <laughs> yeah. There's something about it. That's what I'm saying. It's that's, just so that's like how Paul Light was saying. That's why they de-emphasize the English language. Mm-hmm. And, and it tone de-emphasize the tone. Because we hear any African speak, anybody from the motherland, they talk like, I don't know yeah. how they speak, but it's going to be in a deep tone. Yeah. And you can, feel, you can feel the vibration and all that. Right, but then us, it's not all of our words. What words can we speak? So the only way that we're gonna have that tone is if we just add it in our conversation. Yeah, we if we just choose to speak in this tone and voice, period. Yeah, but it's not any words that allows us to do that. Yeah, because consistent basis. Yeah, because the English language has been de-emphasized. Because words are spells with vibrations and all these other things. So each time that we speak out of tone, then we're strengthening our Europe. We're strengthening our inner. <laughs> yo, when you, yo, when you speak like this, that's your inner. You you strengthening your inner crack of vibration. Yeah, when you talk like this, hey guys, <laughs> welcome. It's like you know what I mean, like yes, inner crack. Yeah, yo. So yeah, this a great build. You feel me, documentary. We got Res the Righteous Ruler. You feel me, we around. So how, yo, for the people that's tuned in, what was we shooting? 
and then how can they um how can they how can they check us yeah, out? Yeah, or what can they do to support or like the buzz share? Is there a link for them to share now? Yeah, yeah, can yeah, they pre order yeah, or yeah, what? They can go to um you can go to the website what about us um www.wauwhataboutus.com. That's www.wau is real important wau whataboutus.com and hashtag project independence hashtag black independence or die and you'll be able to find and keep up with the independence day project um we had a con we had a, a crowd fund recently but that stopped so but if you go to the website we have different ways where you can contribute to the funds uh, okay we have our shirts we also have you know if you just want to drop a couple dollars in the bucket mm -hmm. that works too because we're still working towards producing this this is going to be the project that changes the conversation in terms of black empowerment black independence and us getting off the plantation right so i appreciate these brothers for coming through for bringing light to what we're trying to build because this particular project right here is going to be the next step we're not we're, we're standing on the shoulders of all the other projects and mm. all of the other yeah. um, films that were documentaries that, were, that have been presented. We love the Hidden Color series. Um, we love Elementary Genocide. We love 7 a.m. We love all those documentary, all those documentaries. We love all those uh, brothers and sisters who put in work, and we're just standing on their shoulders. Um, this sure. would not be done without their work. Right. Because they set the stage for what we're doing next. This is the evolution in terms of where our conversation is going next. Yeah, that's real. And how can they connect with you specifically? Uh, Professor Carl Tone Jones. And like I said, my website is What About Us. But you can also hit me up on Facebook. I'm re very responsive. Uh, and Carl Tone Jones. If you Google Carl Tone Jones, I'm the only one on the planet. <laughs> Carl Tone Jones. That's the King Leon X. Yeah. 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 So, oh, listen, I already got a, um, I got a, a video blog that I do yeah. once or twice a week called Office Hours with Professor Carl Tone Jones. I do it in the evenings. So um, nine, nice. about nine fifteen, nine thirty Eastern Standard Time, depending on you know the technology right. and so forth. But if anybody want to tune in, just follow me at Carl Tone Jones on Facebook right. or follow Carl Tone Jones on Google Hangouts, mm -hmm. and you'll be able to um, to link in and catch up with us. And, and we're building, family. We're building. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Ricky Ross, what's up, fam? Oh, hey. I see you. You're getting to, you're getting to behind it. Hey, you're getting to behind the, the man, scenes. The man who gave you your hair. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. We just, we just, we just happened to. We just, we just happened to got. Wait, wait. Let's do limb check then, real okay. quick. Okay, okay. If we, if we, what you talking about? I mean, what you talking about, right? Hold on. Let's see, right? Let's see what you talking about. Wait, 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 talking about. Oh, okay. I mean, my junk come to my chin. I don't know who gave who. I think let's say that we started growing ours at a similar time. You see what I'm talking about? the same Because my junk, my junk come below my chin, fam. I don't know. Well, no, wait, wait. I was wearing the head all day. I was wearing the head all day. I just took corn. I mean, I just took corn rolls out. I just took my corn rolls out. <laughs> Limp checking. Okay, but, uh, okay. but yeah, what's, how people can connect with you, bro? Um, you can check me out on YouTube, type in A Rick Ross Production, or you can go on Black and No Bell and be putting some stuff on there. I'm working with them guys. Yeah. And um, we are, Salute we are, we are packed. I mean, Black and No Bell, they out there doing stuff. We want to try to get um, the, the, um, the reader guy, too. Okay. okay. Cause we're gonna do some stuff. Okay. Right now we are about to blow up. It's about to be. Yeah. It's yeah. the beginning of the year. We got a new president. And we got <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Donald Trump, our president. Yeah, he the president. Uh, Very good. Uh, he he, he the president. The hey, he, he the president. <laughs> you, you like me? it or not, though, you, yo, you know don't don't mean. engage in the type of rhetoric where people be talking about. He's not, not our my, president. Not my president. Not my president. I've seen so like, many memes based on that like, shit. It's like you're here in America. Like, he was, is the what, was Obama your president? Because he's replacing Obama's position. So what you like? Was Bush your president? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like, what's up with y'all? Because at the end of the day. It just feels good. With it's Trump being in office, just make our work more necessary, and 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 it, and it puts us in a in a position where people who thought that yo yo y'all was crazy, America's different. I got all these good white folk and these good the white post friends. Post-racial society, this post-racial society, all these types Bullshit. of things. They it makes that yeah, 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 it makes <laughs> us. So, but that's this is this is why. That's what you feel me. Oh, no, he probably, no, he no, no, oh. Don't worry about oh, okay. It's gotta go out anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was making sure it didn't blow. I'm like, uh, yes. Uh, no, you know, when we talk about that, you know, the whole idea about Trump and, and, and the election, you gotta take into consideration, you know, 
if, if the community was, if, if the, our president, when black people wanted to say my president is black, if he had insulated the black community like he was mm. supposed to, then we wouldn't have to worry about Donald Trump. Right. So if you're worried Thanks about Donald level. Trump, then maybe you need to think about what your president, which you allowed to, you know, pretty much go unscathed for the last eight years. Right. Yeah, you can't say nothing bad right. about him. Right, right, exactly. Know, you can't criticize Obama and, and point out the, the places where he fell short, like way short when it comes to black empowerment issues. You can't, you like, when you're talking to the average black person, like they say, you can't say nothing about Beyonce, you can't say nothing about Jesus, Obama's Drake. in there. Oh, Drake Obama's is in there. Almost a new one, yeah. I think, I, think, I think Drake might be one of the people you can't say anything bad about because you're a hater then, you know? Because his music's too good. You know what I mean? It's like, you can't say anything about Beyonce because you're a hater. If you, you can't say anything about Obama because you're a hater, bro. Yeah. It's like, not, damn, not how could you? you how come you, yeah, you can't just disagree with their politics. You can't be informed. But yeah, we out. Yo, Resurrect just ruler, bro. What you got for him, bro? Anytime you see me do this, it's what's up, African, all right? What's up, African? We out here, man. We, 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 we're moving. we shaking. We got a lot of things going on. Some great things that we involved in. Some positive. All, all things positive. Positive things that we got in the world. Works, man. That's why you see this going down right now. Uh, a lot of the things that we do. I have to call our back, fam. Hey, you see that? <laughs> we, got, we, we got the we got the squad on our back. You mean? That's that's what we ride with, man. Uh, I, I want to start. I want to start rocking the globe, though, bro. Like, I want. I want a globe, like or or, a, or no, better yet, the um the UN joint. That's not a globe. It's the layout of all the continents. I want that on my back, you know what I'm saying? Because that is a proper representation of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah that we, yeah, because we, every, we had all those places. We in all yeah, exactly. those places. Those, they, yeah, that's, that's us. If we talk about being not just yeah, African, this way, because we talk about we got the advantage of this life. We talk about being not just African, but indigenous. Mm. So when you talk about indigenous societies, indigenous people, that, that, that they're everywhere. That's everywhere, man. We were we were here first. So it's like like as far as recorded history, there's nothing before. <laughs> nothing before <laughs> that. You see all that? Melanin. Right. You see the nine ether. Right. You know what I'm Stop saying? Yeah, I'm about to get my drums. I'm trying to figure out a queen and twist my drums. <laughs> There's nothing before that. This is the original yeah. right here, man. I'm, I'm even, I'm even a, a byproduct. But even, but not because, but, but I mean, at the same time, it's like, goddamn. I feel like it was just a whole bunch of different types of black like people at once. I feel like it was just a whole bunch of black women just <laughs> birthed themselves. <laughs> like black women was just like, <laughs> we're here. Hey, uh, now, no, now, shit, now we I need some. I got some. 12% European though. Yeah. I did my ancestry. Have you done yours? Ron Green did his ancestry. Yeah. I, 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 I don't want to be told about <laughs> you don't any want possibility know. of <laughs> uh, your... Uh, <laughs> if I'm white, please don't <laughs> let it show. <laughs> <laughs> right, because I already killed my inner cracker. My heart can't take. My heart can't take being a European, fam. <laughs> but for real, that's why, I, like, shit. That's why I be trying to not to deep condition my joint too much, because I like to have my shit super nappy. You feel me? I don't need them to ever get confused with the curl strand. But they said that the Afro was the number one thing that they had to get rid of uh, post after they got rid of the uh, leaders in Cointel Pro. The part two of that shit was getting rid of the fro. Mm. Cause that's the number one identifier. Mm. It's the number one identifier like it's of a who it is. Cultural yeah. identifier. Yeah. Yeah. Cultural because if you embrace the afro, then you're embracing your natural self. Right. That's the last thing they want you to do when you're trying to fit people into a corporate structure. <laughs> yep. You you lose yourself and adopt the principles of the corporation. Right. Exactly. And uh, and so this is what we do and shifting the culture 100%. So, uh, again, we on the set. Oh, me and Ron Green was going to be featured in a documentary. It's called The African. Wait, no, it's called The Independence Day. The Independence Day Project. And uh, expected release. What the expected release? But oh, right, summer? Right, right now, yeah, I'll tell you what. Um, basically, right now, we have possibly three more people to record. Possibly three more people to record. 
And we're looking, we originally were looking to release by Black History Month, but because we want to get these people in on the project, we're looking, we're looking sometime in the mid-spring, mid-spring, mm, summer. Spring. Okay. So we're looking like somewhere like May, June. Okay, for release, perfect. But we'll definitely keep everybody in the loop. I'll definitely be up on top with my brother Ron right here, my brother right here, King. Yeah. I'll definitely be on top, you know, so we'll definitely flip that and make sure that everybody has the information Ahead of time, we're going to be promoted. We're going to be showing the outtakes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah, that, yeah, yeah. The outtakes is the, good. Yeah. I want people to see the caliber of the people that's on this project. Right. You right. know, without actually leaking or releasing too much of what we're actually doing behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the outtakes are powerful. Mm -hmm, and sure. I was just up in Brooklyn. I had, you know, um, my brother Mastermind, Born Ali. Mm -hmm. I mean, excuse, excuse me. I, I, I don't want to mess with my brother. <laughs> Mastermind, Born Mastermind Allah. Up in um, New York with his wife, E. Queen, Sister E. Queen, and we just did a, a powerful joint. I was in New York several months ago. With, um, we did with my brother Q Butter, and also mm. uh, working with um, you know my brother Aki Taimba, who, if anybody's familiar with the whole situation with the, the three brothers from Harlem, three the hard way. Mm. Well, he wrote one of their books. Mm. Oh, he wrote one of their autobiographies. You say he in the documentary too? Oh, he's definitely in the documentary. Oh. Powerful, powerful um, street organizer, community organizer. You know, we're actually doing something this Friday called the Black Empowerment um, Inauguration. Mm. So the Black Power Inauguration. So we'll be doing that from 6 to 10 Friday evening. And I'll be in there talking about um, how to curb gang violence mm -hmm. and gang violence in our community. And most of that starts with bringing resources in mm -hmm. and letting them mm -hmm. have a visual of what brothers are really doing yeah. out here in the streets yeah. for real. And just on, on that note, too, with the gangs, because I used to be affiliated with a whole bunch of gang activity and stuff like that. And um, so it's like two, two, two mm -hmm. institutions that I don't believe that getting rid of them is actually the answer, but actually just changing the, the message or the mission of them. One being the church and the other one being the ga gangs. Mm -hmm. uh, and because it's the values, I mean, the United States of America is a gang, United Nations is a gang, the uh, Homeowners Association okay, is a gang. So it's, like These, so it's about the mission. Okay, okay. It's about the missions. You yeah. see in the words, though, I guess either we could change what a, a call, use a different synonym, because mm -hmm. all it is basically a team. Uh, yeah. And they're trying to protect, and they're a team protecting something. We lose a lot of the value and principles from gang membership. Because when I was in gangs, it was a code. Yeah. It was a code that you had. To, a code of, a code of yeah. conduct. It was principles. And you, and you could, and you would die. Like yeah. you would die. Like you could get your life taken if you took, if you said that you went by these principles yeah, you and you didn't. Like your friends would kill you. You see, well, then now it ain't no type of code. Young boys fighting girls in the, punching girls in the face yeah. in high school. Nobody jumping in. Men grabbing phones to watch or to record a girl getting her ass beat by a dude. You see, so the right. mission of the games can be changed, just like yeah. the mission of the church can be changed. Because the infrastructure capturing all those black people every Sunday. You feel yeah. me? If the if the pastors would organize themselves, just in each city they could have to start a new black bank to, on on Sunday. Right, bro. I was like I said, you know, I was talking to my sister the other day. One of the most empowering, empowering places you can go to is the black church. Right. Mm -hmm. They make you feel like gold when you uh, read about yeah, it. Yeah, boy. It, it doesn't matter. As long as you have some bread to put in that collection plate, because because <laughs> during that offering, if you don't got no bread to put in, they, you ain't gonna feel like no gold. <laughs> it's at, my church, at, at my old church, they used to uh, have people was like, look, look, if, if you don't have nothing to give. We'll give you something to give. You know what I'm saying? It's like there's people, like there's people here that you know what I'm saying, and, and people will come and put a dollar in your hand. You know what right. I'm saying? It's like it's like the act. It's like you be. It's like involving you in that. So you, you it's conditioning you. Mm -hmm. It's right. like because if you sit in the chair every week not participating, in your, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna start to scorn that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it's like if I give you, if I pay, if I pay your way to participate in this shit. You know what I'm saying? You're going to want to do it. Right. You feel it? You and then it. eventually it's going to be your bread. Yeah, it'll be yours. It's, you know what? I'm not letting nobody give me no more money. Right. I'm, I'm bringing yeah, my Yeah, because I'm cheating time. the Lord. Yeah, I'm bringing my own next time. Fuck that. I'm not going to have nobody mm. pay my way into heaven. All right, bro, gods. <sighs> so, so, yeah, the documentary was crazy. Y'all know y'all know what time it is now. About to get on... On uh, this, this roll up, some but they had some food being cooked downstairs. Yeah, man, I'm in Philly. Oh, bro, the, the build, yo. So I was just building with Oshun last night. We about to unlink. Um, we about to go link up with Oshun again tonight, most likely. I was just um, 
Yeah, so that's gonna be fun. Uh, what's up, African King Leon next Resurrection Ruler, doing a lot of building with with uh, Oshun, the young artist. We putting together this event, which we gonna invite y'all for. Invite y'all to. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, check out my album though. If you ain't heard my album, it's King Leon, King Leon next Freedom of Speech. It's on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play. Check out my book. It's on Amazon. All these types of things, and uh, I got a next. I got my, um, you know, comic book, all that type of stuff. Our Black Power Rangers, y'all. I was just telling them uh, we most most likely. Um, wait, what was what was? Um, okay. But what? What's up? Nah, I was just getting this last. This last. You got any last words? Last words. Hey man, I think we said enough tonight. If y'all were watching, you know, I hope that y'all y'all uh, got some value out of what you saw and what you heard. You know, because that's what we all about bringing, man. It's it's really it's not so much about highlighting the problems. It's more so, um, you know, working our way towards solutions. You know, so I, I'm I'm really what we want y'all to be able to take away from this is being solution oriented. You know, really. Altering your mind state and your thought process so you can get to the greatest results that you're looking for. The more we talk about the things that we don't want, the more we'll have have them. So we want to change our experiences. We got to change what we think about and how we perceive it. Mm. And that's the real, y'all. Don't wish it was easier. Wish it was better. Don't wish. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skill. Don't wish for less challenge. Wish for more wisdom to deal with the challenges. All right. Stay grateful.